Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible and turn to Daniel chapter 7. I got to admit, I'm Daniel is a very difficult book for me. Um, there are some books in the Bible that I think, I believe that I understand fairly well. Daniel is not one of them. Uh, Daniel's, a, to me, it's a tough book. Uh, there was even, even Daniel didn't understand parts of Daniel. He was even told to uh, seal, seal it up until the end, until the time of the end. So let's read Daniel chapter 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now, did you notice um, the last study I did, Daniel 5? And then here is Daniel 7. Daniel's not in order. Daniel's not in chronological order. So in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night, and behold the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first one was like a lion and had eagle's wings. What is Christ likened unto? The lion of the tribe of Judah, right? And then uh, the Lord says he took Israel out of Egypt on eagle's wings. Revelation 12 talks about the woman being taken into the wilderness on eagle's wings. All right. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, I don't know how much bearing this has, but I'm just going to throw this out there, something to consider. Uh, communism, communist Russia, what was their symbol? The bear, right? And the ribs in its mouth, devour much flesh? Well, Joseph Stalin was probably the second uh, in sheer numbers, the second largest mass murderer in history. Certainly the second in modern history. Verse 6. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Uh, a leopard is a very, very fast animal. Now, if this is uh, like uh, Nebuchadnezzar's image, the lion with the eagle's wings would have been Babylon. The bear would have been Persia. And then this leopard would have probably been Greece with four wings. And the beast also had four heads because... When Alexander the Great, the Greek, the Macedonian, died, they divided his kingdom between his four generals. And then they actually fought each other, which wasn't very smart because uh, then Rome came along and conquered them. What did Jesus say? A house divided against itself cannot stand? Yeah. After this I beheld into another like a leopard which had 
Upon the back of it, four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. Well, in a previous study, we covered iron. First time iron appears in the Bible, Genesis chapter 4. And it is talking about the lineage, the children of Cain. They were iron workers. Matter of fact, artificers, an instructor in artificer, uh, of artificers in iron, which means they were highly skilled in iron works. They weren't just blacksmiths uh, making horseshoes. No, no. After this, I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. I wonder if this is the children of Cain. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the teeth of it. And it was diverse. It was different. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. I consider the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in his, this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Now, I believe this is talking about Christ, and we're going to try to prove that. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Ah, what books? The book of life? We're going to go back to this. I beheld then, because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man come with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Now, we're going to go into this a little bit. I'm going to point out some uh, corresponding verses in the New Testament. Because I think... Uh, that's speaking of Christ, and I'm going to try to prove that. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me known the interpretation of the things. 
Ah, here we go. These four beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. Oh, yeah. Which was diverse from all the others, being dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, uh, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. All right, so if Babylon was the head of gold, uh, if Greece was the silver, I'm sorry, Persia was the silver, and then Greece was the brass, then the iron would probably have to be, I guess it would have to be Rome, I guess. So maybe there is some truth to the uh, revived Roman Empire. But then again, the Ottomans took part of the Roman Empire. But uh, I don't know. be honest with you, I don't know. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse, different, from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, and times, and the dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. All right, let's start breaking this down. Verse 7. After this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth that devoured break in pieces and stamped the residue with the teeth of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Ten horns. Keep that in mind. All right. All right, let's skip to verse 20. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth, that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. 
So these horns are, it's a figure of speech. So keep that in mind. Uh, horn is basically uh, rulership. All right, let's uh, decipher these ten horns. Go to the book of Revelation. In chapter 12, verse 1. Revelation 12, verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, in a previous study of Joseph's dream, we interpreted what this meant. It was Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Listen to this carefully. Verse uh, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. Didn't we just read ten horns in Daniel? Oh, yeah. Remember uh, three of the horns were plucked up? Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads? What's ten minus three? Seven. Right? Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, two years of college. I can, I can, I could do subtraction. Uh... A great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his trail, tail and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was her place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Ah, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Ah, so anytime you see a dragon, it's the devil and Satan. It's a figure of speech. And that old serpent, too, is a figure of speech. Think about that next time you read Genesis chapter 3. The serpent talking to Eve. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right, let's keep reading about ten horns. Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, a beast, rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns and ten horns and upon his horns were uh, and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy revelation 13 11 and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon Revelation 17, 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. Scarlet, the color of royalty, that and purple. Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Revelation 17, 7. So we're skipping from 3 to 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and, the, and of the beast that carrieth her, 
which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. Let's skip to verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings, one hour with the beast. Oh, yeah. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitude and nations and tongues. You know that beast you saw rise up out of the sea? The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So when you hear about a beast rising up out of the sea, remember, the sea is the water, and the water that you saw where the whore sits are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Verse 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their heart to fulfill his will, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Um, I believe this is talking about Mystery Babylon. So, some people say Rome, some people say New York, some people say Mecca, some of us say Jerusalem. But, hey, that's another Bible study. All right, back to Daniel 7 and verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there was three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. All right, Daniel 7, 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, keep that in mind, and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1. We're going to take a look and uh, I'm going to show you something interesting. All right, Revelation 1 and verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, Now this is Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, not the Olive and the Tav, which is Hebrew. No, he's saying, I am Alpha and Omega, Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. It's the Alpha and Omega, not the Olive and the Tav. They want to trick you and try to make you run to a, an antichrist, unbelieving rabbi to teach you about uh, Yeshua. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a believing, a believer, and I want to tell you about Jesus. But if you want to learn from an unbelieving rabbi, uh, go for it. I'm going to stick with Jesus. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Listen to this. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks 
one like unto the Son of Man. Keep that in mind, Son of Man. Daniel speaks about the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Listen carefully. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, if you listen to the black Hebrews, they'll say, Yeah, man, his hair, he was woolly. His hair woolly. Uh, no, it says his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. It doesn't say his hair was woolly. It says his hair was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh, they 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 completely missed that part. Uh, we're white like wool. No, they say, oh, his head and his hairs were wool, woolly. Uh, it doesn't say that. As white as we're white like wool, as white as snow. Uh, you know. And his eyes were like, uh, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Daniel 7, verse 9, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. All right, and uh, Daniel 7, 9, uh, remember it said, his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Well, turn to the book of Ezekiel chapter 1. We're going to take a look. Uh, Ezekiel 1 verse 26. And above the firma firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. Didn't we just read about a throne in Daniel 7? Yeah, we did. As the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was a likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it. Uh, Daniel 7, didn't we read? Um His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as bur a, bur a burning fire. Oh, yeah. Verse 27, Ezekiel 1, 27. And I saw the color of the amber as the appearance of fire round about within it from the appearance of his loins even upward and from the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire. I saw as it were the appearance of fire and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the clouds in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God, and when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So, let's go back to Daniel 7. Uh, the throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Uh, let's see. Verse 10. All right, Daniel 7.10. A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Now, uh, this might not exactly be the proper thing but in Revelation 20 verse 9 and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them so uh, here's a little something with fire Ezekiel 28 verse 14 uh, talking about the doom of the devil Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, 
Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, not born, created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Listen to this. Therefore will I bring forth a fire, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All right, back to Daniel 7. Um, verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. And we're going to get back to that. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Ah, burning flame. Oh, yeah. The books were opened. We're going to cover that now. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, there's that fire again. Into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it whose face, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book, books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. So there's your books. The book of life. Um, you know, but there's more than one book. I guess there's the book of life, and then there's the book of not the book of life. There's the book of life, and then there's the book that is probably, yeah, not the book of life. I don't know. I hope that makes sense. Daniel 7.12 as concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I guess that's uh, until the judgment, right? Verse 13, And I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So who is the Son of Man? Well, Matthew 8, 20. And Jesus saith unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Matthew 9, 6. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house. Matthew 12, 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 
Matthew 13, 41, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Who's the Son of Man? Matthew 16, 27, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Isn't that what we just read? Everybody gets judged out of the book for their works. Yeah, it's Christ. Christ was God in the flesh, Son of Man. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. God was manifest in the flesh. How about Revelation chapter 1? Who's, who's coming in the clouds? Revelation 1, verse 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I did an entire Bible study on clouds. There's a lot of information about clouds. I could make another Bible study out of it, but I've already done it. So let's go back to Daniel 7. Verse 13. And I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. All right. All right, we're getting close to being done. Verse 15, Daniel 7, 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this, and he, uh, so he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Where do we read that? How about Revelation 12, 17? And the dragon was wroth, which is angry. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war, war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So, Satan was angry with the woman, went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus. Well, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. This is uh, ties right in with Daniel. Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Remember, the waters are people, nations, languages, and tongues. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Didn't we read about a leopard, a bear, and a lion in Daniel? Yeah, we did. 
And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Listen to this. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him, listen to this, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Oh boy. Daniel seven twenty one. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Oh, yeah. All right, Daniel 7.23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse, diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times, and the dividing a time, now, a time uh, is, a, is a year, and times is two years, and the dividing of time is six months. Uh, I'll try to prove that to you in a minute. Maybe I'll do now. I know somewhere I found it was uh, time is a, a year, but I, I can't find it right now. So uh, maybe I'll point it out next time. All right, Daniel 7, 26. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So that'll be the... Um, the end of time, the kingdom under Christ, who will rule with a rod of iron. So, all right, well, this is the end of uh, Daniel chapter 7. Um, I hope it was useful. Uh, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.